Today I'm going to walk you through how to cite and reference and some general tips about citing and referencing when writing research or journal articles. Now before I get started, if you are working on a research article and you feel a little stuck, I do have a newly updated scientific research paper checklist that will be available in the link in the description below. It's a PDF that walks you through everything you need to do to be able to write your research paper. But when it comes to citing, I think there's a lot of confusion about what you should be doing and how to actually cite and reference things really well within a research or review article. So today we're going to get started talking about software, different tips, and all of those things involved. So the very first thing that, you, that I would highly, highly recommend whenever you're trying to cite in a journal article is to use a reference management system. So for me particularly, I am currently using Zotero. I have used EndNote in the past, which is a paid platform, and I've also used Mendeley when I was an undergraduate as well. So here is Zotero. It's a basically a simple reference management system. You can import in your references. You can make notes in them. You can add tags to them, all of these things to be able to find what you need to reference later. Now, what is nice is if you're in something like Word, and you can also do, Zotero has a Google Docs uh, extension as well, so you can do this in Google Docs, is whenever you're writing your paper, so let's say I was writing um, steroid analysis is important in the fields of medical diagnosis. So I wrote a sentence, because I've stated a fact, I now need to cite that fact. So what I can do is instead of trying to go find the specific paper and write in here, okay, this is one, and I can like make it a superscript one, or maybe it's like the citation style I'm using is in brackets, so it's just like one like this, and then I need to come down here and say, one is this special paper and try and keep track of it. That is a way a lot of people used to do it and it can be very, very problematic to do. So instead, all I have to do when I'm doing this is I'm going to use ACS, which is a superscript style for this. So it's going to be superscript. So it needs to go after the period. But all I need to do is go into my Zotero tab in my Word, do add edit citation, and then I can search for the paper that I want. So I'm going to do steroid analysis for medical diagnosis, and I'm going to enter that in. And I can do multiple in here too. I could always do, let's just pick one of mine. Uh, there we go, steroid analysis by eye mobility. So now I can press enter and it already has one and two in here. So now if I wrote another sentence, I can add this in and I'm just gonna pull a random one that's different than those. So let's do this one and I press enter. So now it's three, but what happens if I wanna move this sentence in front, right? Now they're out of order. Now I would need to go back and do this, or I can just do refresh and it will automatically update that. Now this is one and this is two and three. And then when I need to import my bibliography in, I can just simply put add bibliography and now it's put into this system in exactly what I need. Now what's really, really nice about this is if you're writing in one style and you decide to, to submit to a different journal or you're just in general, you got rejected from a journal and you need to submit to a different journal, you can just come up to document preferences here. And so right now I have it um, for JAX, the Journal of the American Chemical Society. I can easily switch to JASMUS press OK, and it is already switching it into the Jasmine style instead of the Jack style. That's what's really nice about using a reference manager is it is a dynamic system so that you're not going to have as many errors, you're not going to take as much time removing things around and fixing your citations. The second tip that I have for whenever you're trying to cite something is that if you aren't pulling information from a direct source, you can actually use tools to help you find what papers would be best to cite this. And now I'm going to show you a tool that you can use and I always recommend, especially whenever you're citing something, you always wanna make sure that that information actually exists within the paper that this tool is bringing up. You don't just wanna take that uh, paper because it appears in this tool and just go ahead and cite it. 
So this is Sourcely. It is basically a way for you to be able to cite information. If I take the same sentence I just tried to cite, steroids are all derivatives of cholesterol, I can click find sources. And so it's going to help me find sources for that versus me going to Google Scholar or going to my literature bank to try and figure out where that's been said. So you can see that some of these are a little bit older and some of them are a little bit newer, but you can get some sources for this. For a lot of these, I would rather see a review to cite you know kind of this general sentence up here and so if we scroll down we can actually see the biology of cholesterol and steroid and related steroids so we can take this and look in google scholar and be able to find it now this is a book that i could use to cite that as well and so i can add this book citation within my zotero and then be able to use it that way or be able to find a different review for this. But there are other tools that can be helpful as well. For example, using something like Perplexity AI to find sources. So if I go to there and I'm gonna add the focus as academic only and I'm going to paste that in. And so we can see that we can find different papers here. And so this is the reduced high density lipoprotein, which I think was similar. Yeah, it's the exact, it's the first one that comes up here too. So these AI sources are pulling from similar sources. Now, if you know your field really well, you may be like, oh no, there's this one review that talks about that. That is probably a better source. But if you are like, I can't find where this information come from, some of these tools can be helpful for you to be able to find it into the future. And I'll have links to both of those tools in the description below as well. So with having those tools, with knowing how to get the information and how to easily cite that dynamically within your research article, the next question that comes up is what should you be citing? So obviously most of us already know that we need to cite any kind of fact or idea that is stated within a paper. It needs to have some citation with it, basically saying this wasn't just something I thought up of, it, it actually does have sources that I got the information from. And so depending on the statement that you're making, you may want to cite different types of sources. So specifically, whenever you're making broad background information type of statements, it's a lot better to cite a review article. So an article that covers a decent part of that field that includes that background information in it, than to cite 10 research articles that all say the same thing in it. So for example, saying steroids are derivatives of cholesterol or saying steroids are important for medical diagnosis and other things, I would wanna cite reviews there because that is a general knowledge section. If I was talking about the background information to IM Mobility, I'm not gonna talk about individual research articles discussing IM Mobility, I'm gonna talk about a review on IM Mobility and cite that review on IM Mobility in that section instead of a bunch of research articles. This is because if you're choosing to cite one research article for its background information, but that information's in 10 other research articles, you begs the question, why is that one important for that information? Versus a review, it makes sense. It's giving a detailed background section and it's covering a lot of different research papers that is going to be better for someone to read for that background information. So one thing is to always think about a read more section. If they wanna learn more about that one sentence, where should they go? Most of the time, if it's background information, they should go to a review article to learn more about the background information there. However, if you're talking about specific research that's been done, if you're in a literature review and you're talking about a research article, or if you're in your introduction discussion section of your research article and you're talking about previous research or previous findings, you should always be directly citing the research article that those findings came from. You don't wanna be citing a review that contains that research article in it. You wanna cite that research article itself. This is again, if someone wants to know more about the findings there, they should not then go to that research article. They shouldn't go to a review that's summarizing the research article. So that is always really important is thinking about what are you trying to share and what's the best source to cite for that information. And typically a review is gonna be better for your high level background information um, or general information about a technique, a protein, anything like that. You wanna go more towards a review. And when you're talking about very specific research or findings, you wanna cite that specific research papers and articles.
Now, another thing that's really common, especially when you're first getting into writing research articles, is that you tend to stuff your research section. I think a lot of times I've been asked, how many citations does my research article need to have? How many citations does my review article need to have? In reality, the number of citations should just be as many as you need to source everything you're saying in the paper. Having 100 citations doesn't make your article any better than having 30 citations. Now, if you only have one citation in your paper, that means you got every single piece of information from a single source. And that's really dangerous. You do want to have some variety in that you're pulling information from different sources. And you should have this in your discussion, right? Like in when you're comparing your results, you shouldn't only be comparing it to a single source, it should get compared more broadly and fit within the context of the research that you are currently doing. So you don't need to randomly include information or try and find every single paper that has talked about this thing. I think this is something that a lot of people waste their time on when they're first starting to write research articles is they try and read every single article that has ever talked about this topic instead of highlighting the important reviews for background information or the important research articles. Especially when you're writing a research article, your introduction should not be a literature review. You should not be covering every single paper that's been written on this topic. I like to stick to two to three of the most prominent papers that led to my research, covering those in detail in my introductions, and then just diving into the research that I'm actually doing. The other thing with reference stuffing is you always want to cite the most appropriate paper. So if you are citing a review talking about steroid biology, I don't want to cite a review on IMS that just happens to mention steroid biology. I want to cite a review on steroid biology. I think this mostly gets taken out of context when people are work trying to cite their own literature. I don't think there's anything wrong with citing your own previous papers in your current papers as long as that's the most appropriate paper. So for example, when I was doing a ton of research articles on looking at steroid analysis by IM Mobility and LC, I was citing the previous papers because those were the research directly leading to this paper. But the thing that I didn't do is take every single sentence I said and just cited it back to that previous paper that said something similar. I would always go back and cite the reviews because that's a more appropriate reference even if that information was in a research article. Or taking some random research article and just because I'm the author of it trying to figure out a way to cite it when it's not really appropriate for the paper that it's in. So those are ways that you can kind of avoid reference stuffing and it's actually going to decrease the amount of time it it takes you to actually complete writing and citing your journal articles. Now, the fifth tip is to treat your references like a read more section. If there is something that you're like, if someone is reading my research article and wants more information, these are the papers that are really helpful. All of those should be referenced in your paper because that should be where you're getting the information from. So if you're always thinking about whenever I wrote this sentence, if they wanted more information about this sentence, what would I tell them to read? Those are the references that you should be including for that sentence. And the same thing with the literature when you're talking about the research, what is the research articles that they need to go read to understand my paper? Those are the ones that you should be discussing, not every single research article who, that's ever been done on that topic. I hope this video helps you get a better understanding of how to cite not only the software that you can use to cite more efficiently, but also learning what to cite. And maybe this takes a little bit of pressure off of you if you're trying to read everything and cite everything to actually take a step back and think about what's most important to be cited in your paper. And if you have have that you're going to be fine. For example, my review I think only had between 30 and 40 citations, which a lot of people would think is really, really small, but my field was small at the time and that was the most important information that needed to be included in that review. And it was published. So if you're working on a research article, again, download my scientific research paper checklist. The link will be in the description below. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.